While Jesus was living in the Galilean hills, John, called the baptizer, was preaching in the desert country of Judea. His message was simple and austere, like his desert surroundings. Change your life. God's kingdom is here. John and his message were authorized by Isaiah's prophecy. Thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival. Make the road smooth and straight. God dressed in camel hair habit, tied by, at the waist by a leather strap. He lived on a diet of locusts and wild field honey. People poured out of Jerusalem, Judea, and the Jordanian countryside to hear him and see him in action. There at the Jordan River, those who came to confess their sins were baptized into a changed life. When John realized that a lot of Pharisees and Sadducees were showing up for baptismal experience because it was becoming the popular thing to do, he exploded. Brood of snakes, what do you think you're doing slithering down here to the river? Do you think a little water on your snake skins is going to make any difference? It's your life that must change, not your skin. And don't you think you can pull rank by claiming Abraham as father? Being a descendant of Abraham is neither here nor there. Descendants of Abraham are a dime a dozen. What counts is your life. Is it green and blossoming? Because if it's dead wood, it goes on the fire. I'm baptizing you here in the river. Turning your old life for a kingdom life. The real action comes next. The main character in this drama, compared to him, I'm a mere stagehand. Will ignite the kingdom of life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. He's going to clean house. Make a clean sweep of your lives. He'll place everything true in its proper place before God. Everything false he'll put out with the trash to be burned. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Folks, I have the privilege of sharing the good news with you today. Uh, the Advent season for me is one of my most favorite times of the church year. Now, Easter is good too, of course, right? Yeah, we don't want to discount Easter, but without Advent, we have no Easter, right? Without Advent, we have no Easter. Without this time of preparation, we have no Easter. And that's, I think, the good news that we have today. The sharing of this Advent season, this time of preparation, this time of getting ready not only the world itself, but our own lives. We live in this church that has been sharing the good news of this Advent season for about 1,500 years now. A time that we uh, mark the beginning of this, not only this new church year, but the beginning of this uh, path or this journey to Christmas. We see changes in our church and not only the colors that have changed up front, right, the blues, that we wear or that we decorate around this area, but we feel it also. In Minnesota, it gets cold, really cold. Not like here where it's just kind of chilly, right? Right? The seasons change. It prepares us. We, we see changes in your church, right? A new roof has gone on. You're preparing the way for a new life here. It is a new year. 
Last week, Pastor Jeff shared and explained how he was called in years past to stay awake. He shared stories from his past, but also shared that no matter how exhausted we are, or no matter how ashamed we are, no matter what we're holding back, that we have to be confident and stay awake for Christ's coming. So he shared, stay awake, be ready for Christ is here. Well, Advent, especially coming up to this second Sunday in Advent, we hear a number of themes. Uh, we read hope, we hear uh, light versus darkness, we hear stories of watching and waiting, we hear restoring the stories today of repentance, preparing and waiting for Jesus to come. For each time Advent comes and goes for me is a time of great anticipation and also great excitement. It's a time in which I just can't wait because I know the story that's coming. Well, with all these potential themes this Advent, I'd like to talk about this journey that we're on using the practical aspect of this Advent wreath. The wreath is a tool in which we can move from week to week. It's a focal point in which each person, whether we're young or whether we're old, we can tangibly experience this faith walk with Jesus today. So focus today on the candles that God continues to reveal himself to us through Jesus as Jesus becomes flesh to us. Our first candle is that prophecy candle, a candle signifying the hope we get in Christ Jesus. It's a hope that gives to each and, per each and every person this promise of God's unfailing, un unveiling love. Our God, a God of hope, fills us each and every day with the joy and peace which brings this overflowing love to us, this power that just fills us from the inside out. And then on the second Sunday, the second candle known as the Bethlehem candle, lights our pathways as we get closer to walking and seeing who this Jesus is, this little baby born, a baby boy born in the city of David. This week is a preparation week that, that almost like you said, you know, stay awake. It's get ready for what is about to come. It's an opportunity for us to say boldly, for the word of God is coming. So did you hear me? The word of God is coming. This incarnate in this baby boy, a little baby boy. Well, this day, this week, and this time, as we hear in Matthew, uh, rocked the world, right? As John the baptizer prepares people's hearts and minds for what is about to come. From repentance to proclaiming God's presence is coming. Through Matthew, through Paul's letter, I feel we are hearing God's message of overflowing love, which potentially draws us closer in relationship with him and brings us potentially a more giddy people. Is that a word that is used out here? I like giddy. No. I like you it. might, yeah, but you're from the Midwest, That's right? True. Giddy, this happiness, this internal love of whatever you're doing is there. It makes you more excited than ever. There are many things that get me giddy, but this Advent season is one of them. The giddiness is what I use to describe the waiting for the celebration of Christ's coming, but also the Christmas season. It's especially fun to see the kids in our preparations for, for the Christmas season. My wife informed me that we're about 25% of the way there of, of purchasing and gathering the gifts for our upcoming season, which is a little bit behind normal, but I'm not complaining, right? We hope to be sending out our Christmas cards. The kids are helping wrap the presents. We're moving into final preparations at our church with our Christmas programs and getting ready. We, we do a little not live nativity scene at our church. And so that just happened this week. Another mark of giddiness uh, for this Christmas season. 
And like you, many of you may have the Advent calendars that you open up those little gifts of chocolate, or maybe it's something else each and every day that prepares us for the coming of Jesus. <coughs> Isaiah, we hear this announcing text of this new covenant of God with Israel. Paul in Romans announces God's love and knowledge to them and how important each and every person is in the community and how we proclaim Christ's joy to one another. And in Matthew, hearing John the baptizer heralding the saving Lord who is coming to prepare the way. That this little baby, that this Christ child is coming for one and one and only reason. To bring the world repentance for the forgiveness of sins. That all political and real world worlds, including the ELCA, including our wonderful recent election time, where all, I say that in, you know, Wonderful. (laughs) Economic and social worlds will be turned upside down because the coming of Jesus is here. Friends in Christ, the coming of this Christ child is not a happy-go-lucky time. It's God's will to make the relationship right with us and God and right in God's eyes. A friend shared with me this thought about this wilderness picture It's a radical wilderness image. It marks a contrast with the popular culture that we have of Christmas. Right? This comfortable scene that's out there, this manger that's warm and and sharing this sweet little baby in a cozy northern hemisphere hearth. People often talk about preparing their hearts and homes and getting gifts in the church of Christ's arrival, but... Here this week, Matthew invites us in to envision instead this journey that is drastically different. It's a journey in which our lives will be altered forever. It is a journey in which money will be thrown aside, where people will be, where people will be approached by God who are considered unapproachable. It's a journey in which the Christ child will be mocked. It's a journey in which ultimately that little Christ child will be given up as a living sacrifice. This is Christmas. This time of preparation for the coming of the Christ child, I cannot forget, nor will I, that this also is a time in which we prepare our hearts and minds for the Christ child growing up and I, all of us, putting him on the cross. But this is part of that journey. This is part of the love and the preparation of who we are as Christ's people. For John the baptizer anticipated this earthly ministry of Jesus, that that ministry was concluded long ago. We now live in a time after this ministry and after that series of events, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the command to go out and baptize and share this new story. Because of all these things, the risen Christ and the Spirit have created a purified and renewed humanity to which all of us belong to. For we all cling to Christ in faith as purified and cleansed people, as people who declare that Jesus is Lord and that we have this wonderful gift to share with all the world. So today, our Christmas can be warm and fuzzy, but friends, this week is about telling the story once and again about Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection as the true story of Christmas. So as we walk to Bethlehem with Mary and Joseph with the second lit candle, friends, be mindful of what is to come. It is the Christ child, the Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, but it is also the one whom we will crucify. Today we have a picture where there's both a gift and a task in a life of a Christian, for it is life that is gifted by the Holy Spirit, 
and that consequently produces these great fruits of the kingdom of God. What these good fruits will be cannot be specified in advance of their appearance, but they will emerge from you, the people of God, to be given out to this great community. For today, God is with us. God is here celebrating the coming of God's child. God is here in the crying of the lost child or in the slums of the world. God is here now and forevermore. So as we close, we hear, prepare the way of the Lord. Repent, for the Lord is coming. The Lord is here. Amen. Amen. Now may the love of God strengthen and keep you in his peace and may you feel the presence of God in all that you do and say for we are God's people amen amen please share